I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city <laughs> on earth. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to another episode of The Most Haunted City on Earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, And I'm JT Timmons. And we are back with another Q&A. Or nope, what is this? Nope, this it's is a ghost, ghost mail. mail. Ghost, it's a ghost mail. mail. We will be filming a Q&A today. Excuse me, y'all, I've had a Sneak very... Sneak preview. I know, all right? So stay tuned for that, for mm-hmm. sure. But uh, no, this is y'all stories, not ours. So. Yes. <laughs> um, well, before we get into our ghost maily ghosts... Um, Let's go ahead and turn it on over to JT to yep. thank our new para junkies. Absolutely. All right. I would love to thank Levi Lewis, Damis Alde- um, Alchediak, Whitney Bratcher, Gegis Went, and Don, no- Don Nielsen. You all are making it kind of hard for me now. Gegis Went. Yeah. Gagus went. <laughs> I I kind of I kind of like that. And uh, and Don Nielsen. So thank y'all so much for becoming pair junkies. We're really excited to welcome y'all to uh, the Patreon, and it's super fun and ad free. It is ad free. So if you hate ads just as much as JT does, I hate them. Um, you can also listen to these episodes without the ads. Yes, catch me literally on on uh, uh, Spotify for podcast. It used to be called Anchor, but now it's Spotify uh, for podcast. Literally placing the ads begrudgingly. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like hate them. <laughs> Yeah. I was yeah. uh, I was explaining that uh, when I grew up, uh, we lived in Europe and we had Armed Forces television, so they didn't really have ads. Um, there were no advertising. So when we came stateside, we were so excited to watch commercials. And I have like this great nostalgia for commercials. So I, I like advertising. I like ads because it's it's this like, oh, it's, it's a little movie inside my movie. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I understand that that is not the norm. And yeah. Well, you know, you could always just fly to New York, stand in Times Square. Oh, no, Times Square is amazing. It's like, I am in 50 all, commercials. All the commercials. All at the same time. Just so saturated. So brightly. <laughs> yes. All righty. Well, yes, uh, we definitely love our para junkies. And if you want to become one of those, uh, you can join us over on Patreon. Oh, yeah. Are you are you pulling up our ghost mail? I am. I'm pulling up the ghost mail. Pulling up the ghost mail. And here we go. All right. The first ghost mail is from Selena Shea. Selena. Yes. And it is titled, Adopting a Ghost Girl. I'm just already intrigued. Yeah, that's, I'm like, that's a great title. Is it like orphan? Like, but you know. We shall, we shall soon find out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, my name's Selena. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. First off, I just want to say I love you guys and the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Selena. It's awesome to have people who I can relate to with the spirit world. Let's get into it. My entire family is sensitive to spirits, and of course that made me super sensitive, and I am also a medium. I've had the ability of mediumship my entire life, which made my childhood very interesting to say the least. I began having prophetic dreams and seeing spirits around me at the age of four. I had so many paranormal stories, I could write a book, but this one is one of my favorite stories that happened around 13 years ago. When I was 14, my family and I went to a park called Pioneer Village. My little sister was about four at the time and is sensitive as well. This place is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's a town that is homes from the pioneer times with many old artifacts. The homes are kept exactly as they were when the original owners lived in them. There was one house in particular that I was very drawn to. 
It was called the Berwick House after the family that lived in this home. They had four children total. Immediately when entering the home, I felt a little girl present. Sure enough, when I made it to the top of the stairs with my sister, we both see a little girl. She looked to be 12 or 13 and was in a white Victorian looking dress. She was standing in her room and matched the little girl in the portrait above the bed. She waved us, then faded away. We all went on with our day since this wasn't unusual for us. Later that night, my sister ran into my room saying she woke up to the little girl standing next to her bed looking down at her. Once, when I was in the shower, the little girl decided to pull the curtain, uh, pull the curtain to peek at me and giggled. Not going to lie, I was like, girl, what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> but immediately got out and asked my sister if it was her. I knew it wasn't because I had locked the door and she was in the bed sleeping, but just wanted to make sure. Fast forward a decade, my husband moved in with my family as we were saving for a home. On his way home from work, he seen my parents drive by him at a traffic light. He see a little girl, he seen a little girl, which he thought was my sister in the back seat, waving high at him, so he waved back. When he got home and he saw my sister and I eating at the table, he went pale and asked how she got home so fast. He figured out quickly it was our adopted ghost sister. It has been 13 years since she attached to our family, and after five attempts to cross her over, she refuses and wants to stay with us. We even called in a team of mediums, and I tried to assist them to see if that would do the trick, but it never works. She just gets very sad and goes into hiding for a while. She's still with us to this day and loves when we play music. We have learned to adjust to her being with us and just let her do her thing. Thanks for sharing my story. You guys are awesome. I'd love to pick your brains one day on all your knowledge and maybe share some of mine. Take care until next time. Selena Shea. Wow. Wow. You should write that book. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. That's a great write book. The book. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, and we were so taken by the the title of this uh, letter that I'm like, that's a perfect title for a chapter right there. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it is not uncommon for ghosts to attach to people. Um, and, and it doesn't even require sensitivity for that to happen. Yeah, but that hard. Um, yes. Yes. That hard. No. If, they, if they really like you. Absolutely. You know. You know, um, I've heard countless stories. My sister had the, the old woman that she saw like <laughs> once in a cemetery and it followed her seemingly for the rest of her life. Um, there's, there's plenty of stories like that. And, and one of the things that's kind of important to, to understand is that our perception of what spirits have to do to move on and cross over, our perception of why they're here and what they're doing is limited. You know, um, I think in some cases, absolutely, they're, they're stuck here, but sometimes they have purpose. Sometimes there's a reason. There's a reason why they are enduring and a reason why they, they, they don't leave and the, you can't get rid of them or, you know, you can't figure out a way to help them because you may not be helping them. Um, and especially in the reaction of them becoming sullen when you try because that might indicate that their purpose is to enhance or to be a part of your life and when you try to shoo them it'd be like telling you know a family member sure. get out i yeah. don't want you anymore um, when they have attached themselves strongly enough so uh, it's it's really a, a an interesting array of philosophies that go into how to get rid of a ghost or what to do with a ghost or these things, but they're very humanistic. They're very one-sided, mm. you know, even at our best uh, communing and understanding uh, we, we are limited by our position in the universe. We can't just know the vastness of, of possibilities of why something is, is happening. We can only know our part of it. Sure. So, uh, so I, I would, I would say, you know, be aware as you move along, especially when you're speaking to to mediums and other people, because everybody gets a different view of how to approach a problem. 
Um, and the question is, is it really a problem? <laughs> you sure. know, right. uh, uh, to what degree is it a problem? And what can you do when it is a problem, when it is disruptive or destructive or, um, you know, something that is causing you angst or issue? Just know that we are we have limited tools. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds to me that she just wants to be with you. And there's no problem with that, you know, as long, like Chris said, you know, as long as it's not causing problems in your life, you know. Um, yeah, she just, she might, you know, just not want to cross over. Absolutely. There's plenty of spirits yeah. that do not want to cross over for whatever reason. Yeah, the whole purpose that they might be here is is because this place is their comfort or their, right. you know, it, and and. We talk about unfinished business all the time uh, with with spirits, and sometimes the unfinished business is just being here. You know, yeah. sure. it's not I have to right a wrong or I have to do something. It's this world. I have more to learn here. I have more to gather here. I have more uh, connections to make here. Sure, sure. Um, so their satisfaction can come from a lot of different things. And if you if you if you shun a spirit that has um, attached itself really strongly, you might find yourself with a sullen or, <laughs> or or even angry spirit at that point. And also interesting part of this that kind of spurred something in my mind is the fact that you picked her up from like a pioneer world. Yeah, a pioneer world. Um, so interestingly, uh, we had a place in Tampa. It's still there. Um, it's called Cracker Country. And I know that's like the worst name you could possibly what? think of. I swear <laughs> to God, that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's at the Florida State Fairgrounds in Tampa, Florida. It is literally Oh yes, yeah. Okay. It is literally called Cracker Country. I, I swear that. to God. <laughs> Tampa. What are you doing? What's it's Tampa ever doing? <laughs> right? It's full of insane people. Anyway, so <laughs> it's that same kind of concept where it's uh, a, a place that's permanently built to look like old, old Florida. Uh, I know. It's, <laughs> but <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, well, that's I, what they were called, though. Yeah. Florida sure. Crackers. I, 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 but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as a child, they would take you to Cracker Country <laughs> pretty often on field trips <laughs> because, you know, they show you how to make butter and from the old ways and how to make candles and stuff. And um, they're so haunted. I, so... It reminded me of this story of this old man who I've seen still to this day when I go through Cracker Country to get into the Florida State Fair um, and all that. Mm -hmm. There's this old man over by where they do the um, the candle making and stuff. He d he has not left. He's been there since I was a child. Well, they always talk about era cues, like mm -hmm. bringing you know things of the time period. So you know, yeah, spirits really dig oh, things that are familiar. That. Yeah, you know, Colonial Williamsburg. Same thing. You, you'll hear stories like that because yeah. when you manufacture something to be like it was when they were alive, it's like, oh, nothing's changed. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, and he sits in this rocking chair and he's the grumpiest looking old man and he just sits. He's a ghost? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he, okay. He, <laughs> well, yeah. No, Are you so, sure? Yes, I'm positive. Yeah, he's just talking about some old guy <laughs> no. in Cracker Country. <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't the Cracker Barrel? Because no, they do no, have old men who sit in a rocking, no. rocking chair right in front. No. So <laughs> yeah, they do always have that. That's true. I mean, that's their mascot, isn't it? The, the old, old man grumpy in, uh, man <laughs> in the rocking chair. chair. <laughs> no, it's um, it's over by where they they make the candles. He's been there since I was a wee child, and yeah, every time we'd go on a field trip to Cracker Country, uh -huh. we would we'd go to the candle making stuff, and I'd see him sitting out there, and he'd just be rocking back and forth, just like ah, oh, these people up in my space, you know. And so. <laughs> Wow. Um, and I would always point it out to my friends. I'd be like, why is that man so angry looking? Like, who does he work here? And, and people would be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And He's only there to say, get off my lawn. That's get off. Literally. Literally. Just, well, get there, off my butter turner. No, there's not even, there's no grass in Cracker Country. It's just dirt. It's like, get off me dirt. <laughs> so, wow. Wow. Okay. So if you go to Tampa, go there. And look for the. the <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is it always there? Yes. Or just wait? It's like he, always there. Permanent fixture. He is always no, no, there. No, no, no. Is Cracker Country oh, yeah. a permanent? It's a permanent fixture. Yes. Wow. You can go there year round. 
even when the fair's not wow. there. It is the most bizarre thing. I'm going to make this into a TikTok, and then it's going to get to Florida TikTok, which is, like, scary. Oh, <laughs> maybe maybe not. Maybe, maybe let's not. Maybe we not. We're, we're close enough to Florida to, to catch some heat, so. Yes, it's true. All right, here we go. Your brain needs support, and new Ollie Brainy Chews are a delightful way to take care of your cognitive health. Made with scientifically backed ingredients like Thai ginger, L theanine, and caffeine, Brainy Chews support healthy brain function and help you find your focus, stay chill, or get energized. Be kind to your mind and get these nootropic chews at Ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. So we are actually going to uh, start doing something uh, new uh, on Tuesday, our longer podcast. We are going to have a YouTube comment of the week. Woo. Oh, yeah. And our first one comes from Tracy Smith. All right. Talking about Hat Man. This is in oh, reference sure. to okay. the Hat Man. This is on the Hat Man video. He appeared to me in the hospital the night before my heart bypass surgery. He had a hold of my legs and was pulling them. Mm. I had never heard of this and was surprised watching a paranormal show and hearing others have seen him. That's our, you talk about our show. Um, Tracy is. Um, I was shocked that I was not the only one to experience him. I even told my wife about him after my surgery and I called him the Grim Reaper. He didn't look like the Grim Reaper. He had a wide brim hat, a long overcoat, but no facial features. I am freaked out to hear other people have seen him. I told him to let go and go away, and he disappeared, and the feeling of evil disappeared with him. I was affected for weeks for this and have not seen him since, thankfully. That's intense. That is Yo. so intense. Uh, I think no, that's, it was in a hospital. That's the first time I've heard of a hat man encounter involving a physical... That's you know, the other component, which is, uh, and we we spent a lot of time musing about Hat Man, right? Because the stories are, are are fascinating that they're they're so wide and so widespread, and people have all of these different experiences. But that's that's definitely going down in the in the Hat Man right? the Hat Man report, right? <laughs> yes, report. yeah, we're gonna literally have like a catalog and be like, well, in this instance, you know, Hat Man seemed to do something. Honestly, you know, that that's, a, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. I'm actually working on a Hat Man movie. Like as we speak, okay. I'm I'm putting one together because nice. it's so fascinating, and it's yeah. like that's it's a fascinating character, it's a fascinating approach, and so yeah, um, we're 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 setting a uh, a Hat Man story. Well, it, it should be an anthology, a Hat Man anthology, Hat Man anthology. That would yeah. be pretty cool. Yeah, got enough stories for it. Well, yeah, it's mm-hmm. and and like I said, they they're so different, but but the fact that they have this common core uh-huh. is fascinating. Well. What's interesting is because the closest thing to Hat Man actually making contact with somebody was we had that one ghost mail where she said that the Hat Man progressively would get closer. Closer, to, yeah. You know, and I'm right. like, I have that's about as intense as I've heard with no, Hat Man. Well, and that's interesting because it seems like we're getting more intense stories coming in. Yeah. <laughs> we're really getting into the nitty gritty of who Hat Man truly is. Maybe right, we'll. Because he, he's beginning to sound a little on the Mothman side. Yeah. Of being a harbinger. Of being, you know, right before your very heavy surgery, he's showing himself and yep, and and yep, pulling yep. on you and being like, you know, this surgery might not go so well. And you're like, nope, I'm fine. <laughs> Get <laughs> off my legs. Kick the hat, man. Oh yeah, but that's yeah, crazy. that'd be a cool movie. That'd be a really cool movie. All right, so thank you for that comment. Top comment of the week. All right. This next story comes from Jaylene Villanueva. The boat and the witchy grandma. Ooh. Mm. I know. These are great titles, everyone. I know. <laughs> hey, y'all. My name is Jay. They, them, theirs. 
I found y'all's podcast while doing a deep dive on people who remember their past lives, and I have not stopped watching, uh, watching slash listening since. Everything from Chris's knowledge, Madison's experience, to JT's comic relief <laughs> <laughs> got me hooked, all caps. Thanks so much. Thank y'all. Yes. Anyways, I have two stories for y'all of the first time ghost encounters. Uh, of first time ghost encounters. This first one completely changed my life. I was born and raised in Long Beach, California, which is notoriously known for the Queen Mary. Yes, I'm a Queen Mary ghost encounter cliche. <laughs> <laughs> However, both Long Beach and the Queen have a ghostly past, and now so does mine. I know, right? I was about eight years old, and my family was having a wedding reception on the front deck of the boat. Mind you, no one told me the history of the boat, and all we learned about it in school didn't include ghost stories. From what I remember, the hall had large windows to view Long Beach all around the doors that got you to the tip of the boat. You had to walk through lots of long, narrow hallways to get to this hall. And the queen has a habit of getting people lost, which is exactly what happened to me. I was being, well, a kid, running around in my flower girl dress with my cousin up and down these hallways. I remember running and running and turning around to find my cousin was not behind me. My heart sunk. I was alone on this giant boat. I looked around to find something familiar when a woman who was not there before in a maid outfit reached her hand out. I took her hand and she led me to a different hallway. We walked for a while in complete silence. Please note this hallway was very long with only port windows, no doors. We found my little cousin waiting at the end of the hallway. With excitement, I looked back at the woman who helped me get there only to see her clothes changed, almost decaying right off of her body. Mm. Without thinking twice, I ran to my cousin, then to my mom, who was just past her. There's a woman with old nasty clothes, I said. <laughs> <laughs> my concerned mama just looked at the hallway, confused, then back at me. Sweetheart, there's no one there, she said. After that night, a door was officially open. I would have night terrors constantly. Shadow people would leave my bed and I would question if others were even real or if they would disappear again. It wasn't until I started practicing magic to draw the line with spirits. And it's safe to say I do not go near the queen. <laughs> this next story comes from my mom. Her and our family move, uh, moved to Boston from Puerto Rico. She and her two cousins would get babysat by her grandma while the parents were out at work. My great-grandma was an active bruja who worked with older magic. People in their Puerto Rico town would pay her a visit often for services. Her specialty was fertility and spirit work, and it wasn't any different in Boston. My great-grandma wasn't exactly the nicest person and would constantly scare them with spirit talk. If you guys don't behave, the spirit of your uncle so-and-so is going to make you. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I love that. My mom and her cousins were already terrified of her, but this occurrence basically scarred them and would unfortunately become a regular thing. On this day, the kids were misbehaving being too loud or running around. She had enough and told them, that's it. Sit down in my bedroom until you all learn to behave. The three all sit, sat crisscross on the floor of her bedroom, waiting to see what she would do. She goes to an old chest at the foot of her bed and pulls out a ventriloquist dummy <laughs> <laughs> dressed in khakis and button-up shirt. This is your Theo so-and-so, she told them and sat the dummy on her bed and locked them in the room. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love her. Sitting on the floor, looking at this old boot of a dummy. <laughs> Terrified. Silently waiting for something to happen. 
the jaw of the dummy dropped on its own and they got up and ran to the door pounding on it to let them out while their grandma was on the other side <laughs> laughing hysterically i'm sure she was <laughs> man oh. i mean that's one way to discipline your children that but... is psychological warfare is right. what that is <laughs> as a um brew x b-r-u-j-x yep, that makes sense Knowing the type of magic my great grandma uh, practiced along with the type of woman she was, I wouldn't put it past her to allow an ancestor or another spirit to live in that doll. Okay. Let me know your thoughts. Stay spooky, y'all. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that was awesome. Don't mess with them brujas. Yeah. They, uh, yeah the brujas. That yeah, that's, that's serious business. Yes. That is serious Thank business. Thank you, Jaylene. That is just... That, that those stories are both so fun. Uh, the the last story is especially fun. We should put the Queen Mary on our, our list of, of possible places to go. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Let's do it. But <laughs> it, you know, it's interesting um, that the that the old lady spirit would have made you you know like kind of feel like she was welcoming at first and then starts decaying so it makes me wonder because at first I was like oh well maybe it was somebody who died on the ship or like maybe drowned near the ship or whatever but well, it sounded like and and too it's almost the, the the bizarre opposite of 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 a lot of the stories that you hear is if she's holding out her hand to guide you somewhere right um, she couldn't look scary yeah. so she may have used energy to 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 disguise or or make herself look presentable you know <laughs> and so that you wouldn't be like ah! uh, and take take her hand and go with her um so there's a possibility that what you're dealing with is somebody who is using energy to appear a certain way just to get you to your cousin mm -hmm. and then once you're in presence of her cousin she could let her guard down she could let that energy go and started mm -hmm. to appear more like she actually is um, which raises a lot of questions as to what she what she was because tattered clothing things like that those that's a strange uh, uh, array because we kind of understand spirits to be able to present themselves in uh, you know in the in the in the clothing that they feel represents them um, so if you, you if you see like a tattered and scary looking spirit it's probably because of their the construct in their own psychology that makes them think that they are tattered and scary and, yeah. and decaying, and, and decaying. Yeah. right? Because a decaying spirit, that's not the norm. Like, you know, when you, when you have a spirit that looks, you know, all messed up, yeah. decaying, for instance, that's, that's a strange anomaly mm -hmm. uh, for, for, a, for a ghost because ghosts are usually presented in their psychological light as, as who they think they are, mm -hmm. um, which might be a spirit who understands they're dead and they are, therefore they're, they're, they're degrading themselves. Right. They're like, I've been dead so long. And, sure. and, and, and now they're, they're, they're painting a picture of themselves based on their, their loss and their sorrow and who they think they've become. Um, but to be able to show themselves as, you know, whole, um, that might have shown concern for you as a child. You yeah. know, sure. I don't want to scare this child, so I will, you know, muster up energy <laughs> to not look so Horrifying. bedraggled, right? Yeah. Well, the decaying thing almost in my head, because I, maybe I just am like picturing something, but you know, it's, um, I, so it, it's not entirely uncommon where spirits sometimes, if they're aware of the way that they died oh, or yeah. the way right, right, that, right or the injuries they sustained, that they sometimes will portray themselves as that. So that's why I say, like, you know, some people who, you know, died a really gory way, you can possibly see them with the blood on with them. With the gore, right. right. But um, I wonder maybe if she drowned. Because, like, think about, like, a body that's been in the water for a long mm -hmm. time, you know, it would tear up the right. clothing. Yeah. The yeah. Possibly. And we talked. Possibly. We've talked about, there's a lot of, beliefs around ghosts in water mm -hmm. and how a ghost really can't be in water or on water. So boats are, are, are likely places for ghosts to, to appear because sometimes it's just a question of the boat coming by a place where a spirit mm -hmm. has, has died and the, the spirit basically getting on the boat because they can't manifest or, or operate very well over water. You know, that's a pretty classic ghost 
boat, go, go ship, go, cool. you yeah. know, thing. So, um, I, I mean, there's a whole, so, there's a lot of people believe that Haint Blues whole thing is that it's, it's, it's representative of water and spirits can't cross water. Oh, yeah. so, so you don't think that the Titanic at the bottom of the ocean is haunted? I mean, it very well can be. Yeah, that it's would just, be a sucky place to be so a ghost. One of the, well, that's it, the whole oh, problem. So dark. Yeah, it, it, well, and you're just trapped, you know, in, yeah. in, in a sense. You don't have agency or anything like that. But the, there is a belief that ships passing where the Titanic went down might catch the spirits. Oh, you know, okay. The spirits might climb onto the boat and be like, ah, we've been saved. Yeah. yeah. Um, but more likely, you would encounter the actual ghost ship. Sure. Right. You know, the, 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 the energy of the ship itself with the spirits on board might f- come by or, or, we, or, or show themselves. We need to do an episode on Queen Mary. Yeah. Oh, Let's yeah, absolutely. It. Queen Mary is an amazing uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> national institution of ghosts. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I want to say that there's been so much great evidence. We could probably dig and find pictures and video and all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff because people have been investigating and looking at the Queen Mary for so long mm-hmm. that there is a, a wealth of information on yeah. the Queen Mary. Yeah, I think I think um, a lot of what y'all said was right. I think that, you know, she uh, mustered the, the energy, no pun intended, um, the energy to guide the kid over like to where the kid needs to go and then just like was like all right that's enough yeah <sighs> i'm out of yeah because it's it it, it 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 costs the uh the very precious uh commodity of spirits mm-hmm. is energy and if, if if they use energy then they are diminishing themselves um and uh and it can take a long time to re- regain the, enough energy to to present yourself again so yeah and and it is interesting to think of of manner of death because the classic ghosts that most people um ha- have have denoted seeing were are wrapped in shrouds so they're they're you know the sheet ghost you know the ghost in a sheet that's actually the shroud that they used to wrap bodies in because people believe that the spirit when when we die lingers with the body for a while you know, and long enough to get into the burial garb and into, you know, the, the, the position of going into the ground. So the spirit is actually taking the shroud that you wrap them in and saying, well, I guess this is what I'm, <laughs> you know, this is what I am. to include the chains, you know, the classic yeah. chains, because chains were oftentimes used to keep the body from coming up through the dirt. You know, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so they're weighing them down in order to ensure that they don't just pop up when it rains. Uh, so chains and shrouds and all of that kind of play out as the the classic ghost visual, but that's because they believed that the the spirit was still in the body long enough that it was yeah. that it was still trying to muster energy in the body. It's like I'm alive, I'm still alive. You know, trying to get yeah. the body to be like ah, get up, get up, get up. They're gonna bury us. Get up, get up, get up. Here we go. <laughs> We're wrapped in a shroud. Let's go. Um, like. And I, I I don't know if we talked about this before, but uh, a lot of old ghosts images uh, came from like um, Jacob Marley mm-hmm. from Scrooge. He wears a yeah yep, yep. the thing, and it looks like he has a toothache, like the old yep, cartoon yep. toothache. Well, it was because when you die, your your mouth opens, you know, you, the, your jaw yeah. opens. So they tie it to keep it from being so spooky to see this person with their <laughs> mouth right. wide open. And I think now we we sew the lips shut. What? Yeah. A lot of times, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like the, uh, I think morticians sew, the, do the invisible wow. stitch, which means you're going under the lip yeah. and sewing so that the, the lips stay closed so you don't have like teeth or like the, the uh, opening of the mouth mm-hmm. sensation. Yeah. For sure. What do y'all think about the dummy? That, I so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know what to take of that. You know, it's solely just because, I mean, I wouldn't put it past the grandma to have invited something to live in the dummy. Or it could have just been a, a classic scare tactic, you know, of being like, get, get it together, kids. Or, you know, your, your tío is going gonna, is gonna to haunt you in this horrifying doll. Oh, yeah. So, Chris Susi, um you want to hear how messed up my childhood was story. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, another oh. one. <laughs> so my sister, Jin Hee, oh, boy. one year asked my parents for Christmas for a ventriloquist dummy. Oh, of course she did. Um, I, never having a great interest in ventriloquism or uh, any reason to want one, uh, she asked for it and got it. 
uh, to which she then proceeded to tell me that uh, ventriloquist dummies come alive at night. And that <laughs> um, if you see a ventriloquist dummy, you cannot act like you know that they're alive because they'll kill you, of course. So um, if you see a, a ventriloquist dummy like in a place that it doesn't belong, you just have to be very nonchalant. You just have to act. And so she, she builds this up for a while. I'm, I'm going to say it was a, a few months of, of, of telling me how to be careful around a ventriloquist dummy. Uh, one night, my, the, my bedroom light comes on. I wake up, and the ventriloquist dummy is in my bedroom, like sitting on uh, the dresser door. And I'm looking at it, and I'm remembering my training. Because I'm prepared for this moment. Oh, I'm going to the bathroom. Uh, I'm just going to leave the room. I'm fine. I walk and I run to my sister's room. I like, wake her up. I'm like, the Ventura stuff is in my room. It's in my room. And my sister's like, that's okay. And she plods down the hall. And then she makes the sound of fighting. <laughs> like she's fighting the ventriloquist dummy. And then she comes back and she's like, I took care of it. You can go to bed. <laughs> uh, my sister was diabolical. And so, Diabolical. Uh, Ventilocus dummies have always been on my list of, of things that I'm scared of. Well, this should truly be a series of uh, evil plots from Jin He Susie Rand. <laughs> yes. <That's> so- <laughs> the list of things that, uh, that, that Jin He Susie Rand has, has oh, yeah. imparted upon me. <laughs> Real quick, y'all. Um, I have to. Uh, I have to apologize to a pair of junkies who who um, whose name I butchered. Oh, yeah. The the pair of junkie actually. This person actually uh, commented how to say uh, this person's name. Oh, oh, okay. So it is this Dimes Elchediak. Dimes Elchediak. Dimes Elchediak. Yes. Okay. There you go. There you go. I just had to fix that. No, because that's, I've yeah. butchered it twice now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, all right, here we go. All right, the next one is from Ryan Stotler. Oh, Woo! Excellent. Yes. For those of y'all who don't know, Ryan uh, writes to us quite often, and we love their stories. All right, Ghost Girl. That's what it's titled. Dun, dun, dun. Again, another ghost girl. We always girl. see Th- these, these similarities. Always have, they always have trends. Every what is ghost going nail. on? All right. Hey, y'all. This is going to be another short one. I've lived in West Texas now for a little over seven years. And even though most of my experiences have happened back in California, I have had some here also. Back in 2017, I had some friends that were just as curious and open to the paranormal as I am. So one night, we decided to go to the next town over and visit the cemetery there. We got to the cemetery, and we were driving down the middle of it with graves on either side, and I'm in the passenger seat. As we are slowly driving to the right of me, there's a big tree about 50 feet from me, and I see a little girl pop her head out from behind the tree. I couldn't make out features, but I could see her blonde hair that was up in pigtails, and it was curly. It was only a couple of seconds, and she was gone. Had we passed a tree, there was, uh, I don't know, uh, has we passed the tree, there was nothing there. Oh, as we passed the tree, there was nothing there. When I saw her, I felt she was giving off a playful vibe, kind of like she was saying, hey, let's play now, come find me. But I was the only one who saw her, and there were four of us in the truck. That's my story for this week. Thanks for sharing my stories, and I'm hoping sometime in the, in the near future I can make my way to Savannah. Stay spooky, y'all. Yeah, come to Savannah. Yeah. Come on down. Yeah, so... You'll see lots of ghost girls. Oh, my <laughs> God. Ghost children run rampant in Savannah. There's yes. a, a pretty famous ghost girl in the Colonial Park Cemetery, mm-hmm. um, and I want to say there's, there was a hotly contested video out there in the world oh, of, yes. of the little ghost girl that runs along and then jumps up a tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's on YouTube still to this day. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, or you could take literally any ghost tour in America, yep. um, and they all like to say it was in their cemetery, but no, it was in <laughs> our cemetery. Definitely Colonial Park Cemetery. Yes. But um, ghost children, I swear, they are just so rambunctious. They're very playful. Some of them, if they're actually children, yeah. usually, or they can be diabolical because children also can be diabolical. Right. The, 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 the moral structure of a child is very 
limiting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, 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 they can throw tantrums. They can, they can be very demanding and they can, they can be harmful and hurtful. Well, yeah. You know, or this, playful. this reminds yeah. me <laughs> of the little girl that's in the, the Sorrel weed house. Um, and she likes to play hide and seek uh, in the basement, which is just horrifying because uh, she <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> hides underneath like sofas and stuff. And when guests go down there, she'll like she'll like grab their ankles or things like that, you know, to like let them know like you found me. And I'm just, I I pictured that when you were describing this child, like saying like, let's play. Oh yeah. I'm like, you don't get that luxury to be creepy looking yeah. as a ghost child and then say, let's play. You that's, know? that's, that's, that's the, that just comes with the territory. <laughs> you're, you're going to be dealing with creepy children because a child period creepy. Absolutely. Like, you, you know, you see a child where they don't belong. Creepy. Oh. Madison, since we're, um, since we're talking about ghost children so much, will you tell that story that I love about the children di- uh, burning to death? In the Kehoe house. <laughs> what the? What? I love that one. It's um. So that's kind of a tall tale because it's um. That what happened? Well, okay. So the Kehoe <laughs> children. Um, and it's creepy. You, uh, you know the. Uh. So, okay, so the way the story goes, and I will preface this for all of the people on TikTok that are listening who are like, "That's not true. This is a story. This is a story that we like to tell in Savannah. Take it as you will." Anyways. Um, so basically, I won't include that in the TikTok. Go for it. <laughs> Come on. They're gonna rip me to shreds. They, oh gosh, Go for it. TikTok's so mean. Anyways, um, so basically, uh, the Kehoe family had um, multiple children, but they uh, were said to have two twins. And so the twins, particularly, they like to play hide and seek. Normal game for children to play, um, but. You know, one of their favorite hiding places were supposedly the fireplaces in the house. Well, allegedly, Mr. Kehoe uh, was very fond of having a nice warm fireplace um, during, you know, the winter months and things like that. And one evening, you know, the kids were playing and they were playing hide and seek and the twins got into the fireplace on the upper floor. Well, Mr. Kehoe was on the bottom floor and he lit the fireplace down there. And as you know, with fireplaces on a multi-story house, they're all interconnected. So apparently what happened was when he lit the fire, the flames went up and roasted the children in the upper floor. And that was supposedly how the twins died. But, and, and there are the variations on the theme because um, the first encounter I had with it was that they suffocated, you know, that it wasn't that they weren't cooked, but but the smoke. No, like rotisserie know. chickens. That's how <laughs> I <laughs> heard it. <laughs> uh, because conceptually, they would be too far away from the actual flame to 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 cook. If you're on the second floor, it's tough. And my this story, by the way, fascinatingly enough is how the father died in Poltergeist, not Poltergeist, in Gremlins. Uh, If you remember the story, the Christmas story of Gremlins was that the the father dressed up like Santa Claus to uh, surprise his family and fell into the chimney and got stuck and (laughs) died. And that was, you know, so the story of children or people in in chimneys is a a long-time urban legend Mm -hmm. Um, because people seem to forget that there are flus Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know that that there are there are a lot of things in the way of of just getting up into a chimney easily. Um, you know, because we have the, the the dream of chimney sweeps like coming down the chimney. Right. Um, but they they generally didn't travel through the chimney. That wasn't normal <laughs> behavior. <laughs> You know, and take this story as you will. It's a, it is a fun. It is a favorite story. Oh, it is. It's and a very how favorite are, how story. How are chimneys interconnected, though? So, like, wouldn't the wood fall from the second chimney to the first? So the the fireplace is actually not the chimney. Oh, fire, and that's again. In order to get into the chimney, you have to go up and in and over. Oh, yeah. and so they're inter- interconnected right. with one so roof the, yeah. going the up. The chimney uh, is just yes. a big column that goes yeah. all the way up the so building. So the kids would get. So the kids got up into the chimney right. area. Right. Yes. yes. So they would crawl up yes. there. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Really great hiding Roasted. spot. Roasted. Yes. Rotisserie chickens. Rotisserie chickens. Rotisserie chickens. Hashtag rotisserie chickens. That is, the, that, is, that, is, that is a pretty famous story. It is. Yeah. People love it in Savannah. But there's no record, A, of twins. 
yeah. much less t- twins that died. Now, um, the Kehoe children do haunt that house. Yes, there's a lot of children ghosts in that house. But, you know, um, I, I think, like, the only uh, only one of the children, like, died of, like, an illness. I know the infant died. Scarlet fever? Yeah, I want to say it was scarlet fever. Or, or, again, it's very hard to, to completely know unless you go down to the Georgia archives and, and look at family right. histories and death certificates and things like that. Exactly. And the Kehoe house is a very hush-hush sort of deal on their ghosts and stuff. Uh, you know, so I say a lot of, uh, and that's kind of the case of a lot of the hotels in Savannah. They, oh yeah, they kinda absolutely. Like, and the Keogh House has such a weird history too, because there's there's uh, stories of it being a funeral home for a period of time. Stories of it, you know, owned by Joe Namath and almost became a discotheque, a roller skating discotheque. I might add. <laughs> Wow. How different would downtown Savannah be? <laughs> I, I will say, though, I actually stayed in the Kehoe house one time for one night um, because uh, I came to Savannah with my mom um, before I moved here because I was going to uh, do orientation when I was at SCAD. Mm-hmm. And so basically, uh, I was staying at the um Kehoe House, because the Marshall House, where we were staying, was overbooked. And so they were like, oh, we'll just put you over at the Kehoe House. It's owned by the same people. Not a big deal. Um, So I stay in this room with my mom, and it's this beautiful, big bedroom. And um, in the middle of the night, I literally see our door open. Mm. Um, to our, our room and I'm just like okay um, you know that's weird like please tell me that they didn't overbook this room and my mom and I are like sleeping in their bed or something um, and so I see the door open and it's this woman in a Victorian dress with a really tight bun at the top and she comes in and she starts like folding blankets she starts like fluffing pillows and stuff like that and then she leaves. under your heads oh no 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 oh. no like so basically it's a massive it was a big room so okay. uh there was like chairs and couches in the room itself and so she went and like folded a blanket and fluffed the pillows on the couch and the chairs and stuff like that and then she just left uh, very much so like a maid service almost but she didn't feel like a maid she was uh it felt well, the most more famous m- ghost of that house is definitely Mrs. Kehoe. Yes, Definitely. it felt like Mrs. Yeah. Kehoe is who I have now kind of, you know, acknowledged her to be. But yeah. Well, yeah, the my, my, so Mrs. Kehoe at the Kehoe house, uh, the, the great story that everyone tells is that um, they were, uh, it was her funeral, you know, and the, we've talked about this. The body was, you know, in viewing in the parlor and and the, the people came to carry her to the hearse, uh, horse-drawn hearse. Uh, their their pallbearers are carrying her uh, out the front door, but the hearse, as nice as it was, uh, they they didn't have uh, like the story was either it was a donkey or just a a, a, a natty nag of a horse, and Miss Mrs. Kehoe was not having that. <laughs> You're not going to be dra- you know, and so the handles of her uh, coffin popped off. And the coffin hit the ground, and then the, the they said there's a whooshing wind that went into the house and slammed the doors behind it, as if she was like, "No, I'm not. <laughs> you're not driving me in that thing." I love it. She's like, "Take your ass back. I don't want this." <laughs> but she is generally seen as um, on the, on the staircase, you know, classic woman in gray, you know, yeah. uh, woman in brown, mm-hmm. woman of the house sure. in her Victorian gear. Standing on the the main staircase, you know, people catch sight of her or pictures that that seem to suggest that there's something on the staircase. Yeah. So. Well, goodness gracious! So there you go, a little side story of the Kehoe House. So I know. We we really jumped through with that whole house's paranormal history. Here. We really did. Yeah. Uh, yeah Rose well, history, then. chicken babies, uh, and I know. Um, this week Mrs. on Kehoe. Cooked. You. Oh my gosh. You. Oh, JT. <laughs> Me. All right. <laughs> All right. This is the last one, and it comes from Jesse Fergan, and it's Ghostly Memories. Hey, Ghost Fam. I got a ghost story for you. We love to hear it. When I was about seven years old, my parents bought a two-story house on an old farm. They decided to rebuild this house, and not shortly after they bought it and construction started, we moved in. I remember, 
I remember here and there my parents and older siblings talking about odd things being misplaced from time to time and being frustrated or blaming others and me being so young, I never thought much about it. As a few years go by, the construction of this house was near completion, and I was about 10 now. It was a warm summer day. I had come in from outside to grab a drink of water. I had heard someone shortly after run up the stairs where all our bedrooms were. There were five rooms total. The one room at the top of the stairs was a bathroom. I never liked that bathroom. It had an old iron tub in it that every time I was in there felt like someone was standing right behind me. My sisters always told me rumors that a girl passed away and she wanted me uh, and she wanted me. I just figured they wanted to scare me as all siblings mess with each other. Yes. But it <laughs> But anyways, as I was getting a drink of water, I had heard footsteps running up the old hardwood stairs. I was concerned since I knew I was the only one in the house unless one one of my older sisters were messing with me as I went to walk up the stairs. I got to the first three steps and felt a heavy feeling. Sorry, there's no punctuation. Hold on. A heavy feeling as I looked up the main bathroom door slammed shut and I was so freaked out. I shot out of the house to tell my dad what, what, uh, what just happened as he told me. As he told me, I was seeing uh, things because I was too warm for the summer heat. A few weeks later, as I avoided that bathroom like no one's business, I was in my room uh, listening to my Walkman, if anyone remembers them, when suddenly it just stopped working. As I was confused, I got up to grab batteries. As I looked up, I heard my name in the back, my head I heard the name in the back of my head whisper to me. I slowly turned around to find a small little girl about my age, dark figure and no face from behind the shadow. I heard her whisper, M or M. I was shocked as I heard it one more time to, uh, in a blink of an eye, she was gone. Like I was in a daze years ago, by I am 32 now, I own my own house. I thought I had forgotten this little girl. I was in my basement grabbing laundry. The washer, when I, uh, out of the washer, when I heard in the ever so soft but scary voice whisper, M. As I turned around, I looked down to this five foot little girl fade away right in front of me as I heard it whisper my name one more time. I am confused if I am dealing with an evil spirit or a guardian angel or something that's just following me that attached to me at a young age. Really, it's, just, it's, it's just, all themes. Mm-hmm. You know, these the uh, the stories come in thematically. A uh, little girl, attached spirits. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I, it, it, I I think you just have a, an attachment. That's what I was thinking. It's just moaning Myrtle. Um, <laughs> that, that's what the M stands the for. Old bathroom ghost. Yes. Everyone's favorite bathroom ghost. Yeah. Um, but all jokes aside, though, I do think it is simply an attachment. I don't know if it's necessarily, like, a an evil entity because it hasn't actually tried to, like, do anything. Right. Um, it's just acknowledging, A, that it it's present, and B, that it knows you. Yes. You know, that, those, those things become kind of integrated as far as what purpose the spirit has. It seems to be attached to you. You know, um, and knowledge of you is uh, is a good indicator of why it's right. attached to you. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I would just say, like, you know, as long as it's not posing any problems to you, you should be fine. Um, but nonetheless, some spirits are just creepy. They just do things that it's like, why would you do that? You know, and <laughs> yeah, and they may not be trying to be creepy. Right. They might be thinking, hey, I, hey, hey, hey. But what you see is. Ah! And that's scary. Yeah, know? exactly. But um, but thank you guys so much for sending in all your ghost mail. Uh, if you have a ghost story that you'd like to share with us, send it over to ghostmail at hauntedcitypodcast.com. Um, also, 
Q&A stuff. If you have questions that you would like us to answer, utilize that Q&A button on TikTok under Haunted City Podcast, and that is where I find all of our questions. So if you have a question, leave it there. Um, but with that... And if you don't have TikTok, if you send us a ghost mail and just put question in the subject Yes, line, that also works. We, 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 will, we will address that as well. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's just hard when you leave comments uh, in various places right. um, for me to find all of them. So uh, you use the Q- Q&A button or, or, ghost, or, or mail. ghost mail. But with that, my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie, And stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>